Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at uh, three different methods to check electrolytic capacitors. Uh, so the first one and the easiest one is just to physically look at the capacitors. Now, these capacitors are a little bit different in that they, uh, they have this plastic sort of insulation on top of them. Most of them will just be metal and they'll have some slits cut in them. Uh, what you want to look for is if that slit has a little hole in it or if it's bulged up and actually you can see this one uh, even though it is kind of a weird looking cap it's bulged out quite a bit here you can see like around in here and the top's a little bit rounded uh, compared to what it should be now both of these capacitors came out of a power supply one of them's actually okay the other one is uh, completely shot so anyway uh, if you look at the difference there, you can kind of see this one, the top is pretty flat, and this one is just kind of bulged up a little bit. So that's the first sign that a capacitor might be bad. Uh, for the next test, you'll need to make sure that the capacitors are discharged, and these have been sitting on my desk for like five months, so I'm sure they're discharged by now. Uh, that's especially important in uh, high-voltage stuff like power supplies. Uh, like these caps are rated for 250 volts and they would probably get kind of close to uh, actually hitting that. But anyway, uh, one little tip with that is if you have a multimeter that has a low impedance mode on it, like this one does, you'll see it says auto V low Z on that. You can actually switch it to that mode and put your probes across the cap and that will actually discharge it. Of course, these caps are already dead, but anyway, we're going to go ahead and switch our multimeter over into the capacitance mode. Now, you can try to measure capacitance while the capacitors are still on the circuit board, though it's probably not going to be the most accurate thing. Uh, it's recommended to take them out if you can, especially if you suspect that they're bad and they look like they're bulging. I would take them out, get a multimeter. Um, and we'll just put the negative probe on the negative side of the cap and the positive on the positive side. And you should see now, these, these measurements do take a little bit to actually come up. And you'll see there we have 202 microfarads, which the capacitor is rated for 220 microfarads. And usually the, uh, the tolerance is like plus minus 20% uh, on a capacitor. So 200 microfarads is just fine. Now, if we measure this one, it's coming up as about two microfarads. And you'll notice that measurement's not going up anymore. Uh, it's actually slightly dropping as we speak for some reason. But anyway, uh, that was only measuring about two microfarads, which is far lower than the. Uh, far lower than the 220 that it's rated for, and that would be a definite sign that this capacitor is bad. Now, a multimeter, it won't tell you the whole story. That's the only problem. So we say, let's say we have this cap, and we measure that, and just, just note that it does take quite a while for the uh, measurement to come up on mul most multimeters. This one's actually one of the faster ones. Uh, but anyway, oddly enough, we're actually getting like 300 microfarads now that's kind of weird now there we go 200 yeah the capacitance measurements kind of like to float around on multimeters for some reason but anyway that 200 microfarad reading that we're getting off of this might not tell the entire story the proper way to do it is with an esr meter and the proper way to do an esr measurement is with a proper esr meter um Unfortunately, I don't have a proper ESR meter. I have this thing. Uh, this is a component tester, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you how this is actually still useful. These things only cost like 15, 20 bucks. Uh, so if we put this cap in, it doesn't really matter how we put it in. And we'll just lock that down, push the test button, get it so that you can actually see it, hopefully. You'll see that we have the good cap, the ESR value down here is kind of what we're interested in. You'll see it's 0.14 ohms, which is actually probably okay for this capacitor. You'll see it also gives you the capacitance, which is right around 200 microfarads. V loss, we're not really worried about. Um, but the ESR value there, it's under, it's well under one ohm, so this capacitor is probably fine. Um, we'll take that one out though and put in the bad one. 
And this one should be kind of interesting with that ESR value. So I've got the bad capacitor in the uh, test rig now. Turn this back on. And you'll see we have 230 nanofarads instead of microfarads. You gotta watch the symbol over here because otherwise you'll start to, uh, you'll mess this up. You might say, oh, it's got 230. Well, that's right. And then you look at the bottom, it still says 0.14, but now instead of ohms, it's actually kilo ohms. So you have an ESR of 140 ohms, which is absolutely terrible and indicates a bad capacitor. You notice this V loss number is also way higher. It's 24% instead of a half a percent, I think. All right, so we have this ESR number now. How does that help us determine whether a capacitor is good or not? Now, you notice this capacitor, we have an ESR of 0.13 ohms. What you can do is you can Google capacitor ESR chart and go to images and you'll come up with something like this. Now, this capacitor is rated for 250 volts at 220 microfarads. So if you go to the side here, 250 volts and 220 microfarads is this column. So we go across, the ESR should be about a half of an ohm or less. If it's less than half an ohm, it's fine, which this one was measuring 0.13. So this capacitor is actually absolutely fine, nothing wrong with it. And you'll see that there's uh, just this whole chart. You just find the voltage rating in your capacitor, which it will very obviously say on the side of it, um, as well as the capacitance. So 250 volts, 220 microfarads, and you just go to your chart, you find the voltage column, you go down to whatever your capacity is, your capacitance is, and you'll notice we've got about half of an ohm is what it should be ish. And like I said, if it's lower than half an ohm, that's actually great. If it's higher than half an ohm, that means that the capacitor is probably starting to fail on you. And usually what happens in these things is the, uh, the electrolyte light goes bad or it starts to dry out. So when we measured the other capacitor that was bad and we got 140 ohms as the ESR, this is definitely bad because that's way over half of an ohm. So anyway, one of those capacitors is definitely bad. The other one probably okay, but considering that the one that was right by it failed in less than a month, I probably still wouldn't trust it. But anyway, and usually if you find one bad capacitor in a power supply, you'll just replace all of them. Um, at least all of them, like these two were on the primary side of the power supply, which is why there's such a high voltage and they're right next to each other. That's how you, and actually, if you looked at the bottom, they're just connected in parallel, I do believe. Uh, but anyway, uh, these guys, I replaced them both. Uh, the power supply has been working fine for a good five months now. But anyway, that's just the basic crash course in how you test capacitors to see if they're good or not. And relatively cheap equipment to set this up. This little ESR meter is like 15, 20 bucks. A basic multimeter, uh, basic decent multimeter that would have a capacitance range on it, maybe 30 or so. Uh, good to have. Obviously, the first test is free. If they're obviously bloated and bulged out, there's, you know, <laughs> definitely worth replacing anyway, because if they're not bad now, they're going to be bad in relatively short order. But uh, hopefully you guys found that useful, and I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.